Over the past week, social media feeds have exploded with two different stories released two days apart, two polar opposite topics, two stories that share more in common than you might think. On January 13th, the Procter & Gamble company Gillette unveils a one minute, 49 second spot that tackles the subject of toxic masculinity, imploring all men to up our game and do better, essentially making a social statement in the wake of the Me Too movement. It's a simple, straightforward, yet polarizing message to some. As of this video, it's triggered 642,000 likes, 1.1 million dislikes, and more than 330,000 comments on YouTube. It has angered the Twitterverse and has even generated some talk of a Gillette boycott. Would you believe not every man loves it? But two days earlier, on January 11th, online personalities Justin and Greg from Saskatchewan took dead aim at the people of Norway and also challenged the mayor of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan to step up to the plate when they discovered that the Norwegians had gone out and built a bigger moose statue than Mac the Moose. Dear people of Moose Jaw, an egregious offense has been committed against you by the people of Norway. The people in Oslo, Norway purposely, and I mean purposely, created a moose bigger than Mac the Moose by 30 centimeters to try and stick it to us and steal the world's largest moose statue. We people of Saskatchewan, we are friendly, we are kind, we will give you the shirt off our back. But when you come after our national treasures, we will not abide that. We are calling on the mayor of Moose Jaw, Frazier told me to put 31 centimeters back on Mac and stick it to Oslo. And the mayor of Moose Jaw, Frazier told me, has responded by promising to defend his city's honor, re-establish Mac the Moose as number one in the world. Meanwhile, over in Norway, the deputy mayor of a town near Oslo is mocking Moose Jaw's efforts to fight back, vowing they're gonna do everything in their power to keep their moose bigger. This has triggered a media firestorm and a story that is being picked up by news organizations all over the world. But what do these two seemingly unrelated stories share in common? I mean, what do conversations triggered by a razor blade company and a Canadian moose statue mean to you? Especially if you're someone who's actually trying to attract attention in the marketplace. Well, these stories are relevant when you recognize just how much the marketing goalposts have shifted in the 21st century from one-way interruption to two-way dialogue. I mean, for more than six decades, traditional marketing has focused on interruption, 30 to 60 second spots heavily focused on features, advantages, benefits of a particular product and service. What the Gillette and Moose Jaw stories reveal is just how much the marketing game has shifted to inspiring dialogue, two-way communication that allows everyday people to weigh in with their thoughts, their opinions, their ideas, and even their own content. But well, we asked Justin Rivas to weigh in with his thoughts on how anyone can spark a dialogue and get people talking. It's really about giving a voice to your audience or giving them something that they can rally around and share and talk about, as opposed to what a lot of organizations, businesses, and people do is, is they want to communicate something to their audience. They want their audience to learn something from what they're saying. And that is always tougher because there's just so much content and so much noise coming at all of us that when you can create content that actually does something inside of someone where they go, ah, yes, you've captured what I've wanted to say or given me a point to talk about, you're gonna win. So far too many people in business are still spending way too much time talking about how to get bang for the marketing buck when they should be asking a much bigger question. What is our social responsibility when it comes to 21st century marketing? I mean, you want to create a buzz, you want to have people come to you, it comes down to two words, inspire dialogue. When you inspire dialogue, it places you at the hub of two-way back and forth communication. People don't really care that much about your product specs or limited time offers, but if you inspire dialogue, well, not only do they care, they share. 
and your story starts to spread. Hey, it's not about you, which is what traditional 20th century marketing was like for more than six decades. Now, it's all about them. So here are three things to reflect on if inspiring dialogue is crucial for your business and brand. Number one, create story-based content. I mean, can you share a story that actually focuses on something other than your actual products and services? In both cases, Gillette is not talking about razor blades and shaving cream. Justin and Greg are not pitching their consulting services. Number two, do you have a clearly defined point of view. Are you going to let people know where you stand on a given issue or topic? Will you pick a side like Nike did with Colin Kaepernick and avoid sitting on the fence and going down the middle of the fairway? And with that point of view, you get to decide whether you use honey or vinegar to attract attention. Gillette put all the chips on black and threw a potentially toxic hand grenade. Meanwhile, Justin and Greg and Mayor Fraser told me have been keeping it light playful, entertaining, little tongue in cheek, as opposed to serious and intense. But both approaches have invited dialogue. And number three, stick to your guns. No matter if you get one dislike or a thousand, you gotta be true to yourself and give voice to your values. Inspiring dialogue means having the courage to plant a flag on that values mountain, sticking to what you believe in and sharing those views in a respectful manner. As Martin Luther King once said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. If you like this video and feel it's worth sharing, we'd be honored if you pass it along to your friends and got them thinking about creating jaw-dropping dialogue. Thanks for watching Leaders and Legends where you'll never know who you'll meet or what you'll discover. You have to take a stand on the side of something. What we're learning is if nobody hates you, nobody loves you. And the power of being polarizing is how you create real brand champions and people that believe in you. If you're trying to be safe and you're trying to uh, always have people like everything that you say, there's just, it's impossible. And at the end of the day, your content will be super wishy-washy. The only thing to say to that, though, is... Whatever side you decide to land on and be polarizing about, it better fit your longstanding culture and who you are as an organization. Because even in the case of Gillette, who recently released their ads, is it felt a bit out of character. Whereas when Nike does it, Nike's been happy to be polarizing on the forefront of social issues. You can end up caught in simply creating a marketing stunt and getting found out. Make sure it's true to who you are.